Coming up on this week's news, a summer solar crime spree sweeps the nation as thieves make off with thousands of PV panels. We investigate why so many EV chargers are broken, and we ask the probing question, how do you align the screws on a light switch or wiring accessory? Are you a straight up and down kind of person, or are you a complete randomer? Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with the Electric Heating Company. Whether you're listening in the van on site or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joe Robinson and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. And as always, if you think you've spotted the two words that I've been challenged to slip into this week's show, comment with them below for the chance to win a prize. Police are reporting a solar crime spree this summer as thieves make off with thousands of PV panels. It appears criminal gangs have cottoned on to the fact that solar farms are valuable and vulnerable. The problem, say experts, is that installations are in visible outdoor locations which are difficult to protect. Police tell us that they're working to get on top of the crime wave. West Mercia Constabulary reports that it has recovered some 550 solar panels worth over £100,000 which were stolen from a farm in their region. A 23-year-old man is helping them with their inquiries. Inspector Dave Wise says that the recovery and arrest demonstrates the police's commitment to safeguarding renewable energy infrastructure. It's not just the panels themselves that are being targeted. Crime reports show that copper cables, batteries and inverters are all being taken. Hotspots are mostly in rural areas, especially in the west and the southwest of England. Former West Mercia Police Officer Gary Higgins advises installers to get the equipment forensically marked with smart water to make it traceable and less attractive to criminals. News of the crime spree comes hot on the heels of the revelation that Europe has the same amount of solar panels in warehouses as have already been installed. According to a report, no less than 40 gigawatts of photovoltaic panels are in storage waiting to be shipped, but there are big bottlenecks to get through before the units can get onto roofs. The problems are wearily familiar, say environmentalists. Tara Connolly of the campaign group Beyond Fossil Fuels says that governments need to urgently expand training programmes for installers, address grid connection problems and cut bureaucracy. She says if the panels were installed, they could replace 7 billion cubic metres of fossil fuels. One project, however, that has made it off the drawing board is a new solar car park for Northumberland County Council. The local authority has covered its parking area with a canopy made from PV panels. It's been designed and built by UK Power Network Services and will help provide clean energy to the council's headquarters in Morpeth. It's expected that the install will save up to £150,000 on energy costs each year, which can be invested in council services. In other news, concern is mounting over the number of EV chargers that are broken or otherwise not working. One firm in the maintenance game estimates that as much as 30% of charge points are out of order in parts of the UK. Across the board, the calculation is that over 5% are faulty. Electric vehicle drivers will be familiar with the frustration of arriving at a charge point only to find it out of action. The biggest problems are loss of power supply and connectivity issues with payment platforms. Other issues include cable damage with dirt and litter finding its way onto the electrical contacts. Tom Gill of the Eco Expert says a simple answer to why so many EV chargers are broken is that manufacturers are not building them to a reliable standard despite statements to the contrary. The most dependable units appear to be Tesla's superchargers, which have a leading satisfaction score of 83%. This reliability is down to the product's inherent simplicity. BP's extensive pulse network comes in at 8th place with a score of 68%. The main problem here is back office connectivity. Earlier this month, the government brought in new rules for public charging points. These state that all rapid chargers must be reliable for 99% of the time during the year. Providers of chargers must also publish information about how reliable their kit is, and they must make this available on their website. Whether it fixes the problem remains to be seen. The spectacular growth of renewable technologies such as EV chargers and solar panels is behind a major overhaul of the JTL Electrical Apprenticeship Standard which comes into force in September. The body says that the installation and maintenance electrician standard in England is being transformed for the 21st century. The grade will now include a focus on sustainable kits such as renewables, LED lighting, battery systems and smart building technologies. There's also a special section to improve candidates' digital skills. JTL says the plan is to create the next generation of electricians armed with the latest green skills and able to connect low carbon technologies. The body has now launched a marketing campaign called Your Future, Our Planet to get youngsters into the trade. Now, how do you align the screws on a light switch or wiring accessory? That was the question that we put in a special summer poll. We wanted to know if you simply let the screw slots fall where they may or whether you took care to align them either vertically or horizontally. Well, 
the results are in. And a mere 16% of you admitted to being randomers, those who allow the screws to end up wherever they end up. You mohawk sporting leather jacket wearing anarchists, you. About a fifth of you thought they looked best lined up horizontally, but they were beaten by the straight up and down guys and gals at 27%, which is obviously the correct answer. But most of you asked, exposed screws, is this 1960? Oh well, please yourselves. For the record, I'm a straight up guy, Gary's a flat cap, and Gordon's a randomer, but you probably guessed that anyway. And very briefly, in other eFix news, if you didn't catch last week's fortnightly live stream, then you missed an absolute corker of a show. Industry giants Vargo guested in the form of the legend that is Carl Dakin. He presented Eddie Clemens off of Pegasus Electrical and Control with the eFix Person of the Year Award, supported by Vargo. And if that wasn't enough, special guest James Finney off of Finney Electrical stepped up to the plate and absolutely smashed the electrician's challenge, rocketing to the top of the table on his very first attempt. And what's more, he made it look like an absolute breeze. And we got to find out all about Gary's holiday, taking brass rubbings in various UK landmarks. If you're watching the video version of this podcast, then hopefully the image that just popped onto your screens won't haunt your nightmares like it has mine since last Wednesday. In product news, scientists have come up with an alternative to solar panels. Researchers at Tsinghua University in China have unveiled units which get their power from rain. It's all down to a clever device called a triboelectric nanogenerator. This creates electrification from the contact between solids and liquids. They're typically used to get energy from waves, but the boffins reckon they're an effective way to harvest raindrops. Professor Zhong Li, who led the research, says that rainfall actually contains abundant renewable energy. In parts of the world where rain is more common than sunshine, the tech could turn homes into mini power stations. Are you listening, Manchester? That is pretty cool if it works, but to be honest, I'm struggling to believe it could generate usable amounts of energy. I think you'd be better off harnessing the wind power from the wings of your pet budgerigar. Anyway, just before we get to your favourite bit of the show where I reveal last week's challenge words and winners, we want to thank our premium partners. We couldn't make the news without you. First up, they're the people who've created the Swiss Army Knife of solar inverters, along with all-weather batteries, very much the Boy Scouts of the solar industry, it's Sunsync. Up next, for all your circuit protection needs, they're like having an Italian star striker in your premiership team, it's Ludum Palazzoli. Next, they're your one-stop solution provider for EV installations from domestic to large DC public chargers, it's the ingenious and gifted Garrow. The best thing to come out of Yorkshire since stainless steel, it's Doncaster Cables, the home of EV Ultra and other groundbreaking and quality cables. And to fix all that gear together and to surfaces, you need fasteners that would win a gold medal. It's Olympic fixings. Big thanks to you all. We really appreciate your ongoing support for the news. If you think you know the words that I've smuggled into this week's show, pop your guess into the comments and we'll dig out a goodie bag prize to the first to get the right answers. Last week's words were koala and liposuction, and we have a note of controversy for our winner this week, as it would appear that Kevin Henry VIII got in there first again, just ahead of another frequent winner, the fella 172. However, I just happened to notice that the guesses weren't correct to start with from Kevin, but were subsequently edited to the right answers. However, because I'm a nice reasonable guy and can't actually provide any proof of this, in an ENW first, we're going to have two winners. So well done, Kevin Henry VIII and the fella 172. You've both won a prize, so click the link in the show notes to claim it. Before we go, just to let you know that if you'd like to be featured in next week's news, simply visit the news tab on efix.co.uk. Tell us about any exciting new products you've discovered, any stories you've spotted, or simply any issues that you believe deserve the community's attention. The eFix team will then get on it, and everything will be considered for future news bulletins. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with The Electric Heating Company. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening, and until next time, have a great week. Stay safe out there, and remember, there's no such thing as a taut calibrated arm.